Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Gemma and the International Booker Long List 2024 has just dropped. Let's discuss. So before we get into it, I have a raging cold. This is the joy of having a snotty, germy four-year-old. Uh, so I will try and edit out all the sniffles, but uh, there might be the odd one that slips through the net. Okay, so the International Booker Prize long list has just dropped. I have to say I watched the live on the fabulous Bob the Booker's channel, so I got some of the chat from there. But my initial thoughts, having not looked into too much detail for any of the books, is that I'm a little disappointed with the lack of diversity. It's really European heavy. I think like eight of them are translated from European countries and only one from Asia and the others are from South America. Uh, so nothing from Africa at all, uh, which is a little disappointing. We will talk through them all, but one that I was particularly pleased to see on the list was Crooked Plough by Itamar Vieira Jr. translated uh, from the Portuguese by Johnny Lorenz. This is a Brazilian novel and I am already reading it. Uh, only just, I'm 60 pages in. But yeah, so I was delighted to see that on the list. So I will read at least one from the list this year. This was also nominated for the Dublin Literary Awards. So that was why it was in my hand in the first place. But this one is interesting. So we're on a plantation in Brazil and we're following two girls who find a knife underneath their grandmother's bed and one of them chops their tongue out that's how the book opens and uh yeah i <laughs> i don't really know what more to tell you about it. i'm 60 pages in and that's all i've really garnered so far this is definitely a book about sibling dynamics family dynamics um community on a plantation so yeah but there's magical realism i think in this though so far it's been very low level so yeah i would say i'm not 100% hooked into this it's not super long either I think it's only 270 pages long so yeah so I'm about what is that a third of the way through um quarter of the way through and I'm not completely hooked but we'll see where it goes but I'm pleased that I'll have read one the other one that I was really pleased to see on the list was Meta 210 by Huang Sok Yong translated by Sora Kim Russell and Yong J Josephine Bay, uh, because I had already saved this one on Everand. Uh, there is an ebook version on Everand if you're interested. I will also link to my Everand um, thing below if you want a free trial. And this is a multi generational story, which obviously appeals to me straight off the bat. And we're following three generations of a family of rail workers. They're laid off and they're um, doing a high level sit in, high altitude sit in um and it's i think to do with sort of the working class etc etc translated from the korean set in korea but yeah i think it sounds really interesting but it's one of the longest ones on the list uh rudy's come to say hello so those are the two standouts for me everything else on this list i have never heard of so let's talk them through together we have the silver bone by andre kirkhoff translated by boris dralyuk uh, Andre Kirchhoff I have heard of I'm pretty sure I've got one of his books on my shelf I think he might be Ukrainian so yeah this is set in Kiev uh, in 1919 translated from Russian sorry um, and it's at a time when the Soviets have control of the city um, but the west is sort of pushing in and we follow a young boy who has lost his ear and his parents in the fighting but overhears um some military information in his flat uh and it goes from there i believe so it sounds really really interesting though i do think there's magical realism elements involved in this one as well um and that is not always my jam so uh we shall see then we have simpatia by rodrigo b blanco calderon translated by noel hernandez gonzalez and this actually sounds fantastic. This is set in Venezuela, translated from the Spanish, about um, a period where there was mass, mass exodus from 
um, this area of Venezuela uh, and uh, a guy is left behind his wife rings her up says oh I'm off and he's like oh thank god for that um, and then sets up like a dog sanctuary in one of the old abandoned mansions I think uh, so I mean if it's got dogs in on there right so yeah this one sounds really really good then we have Not a River by Salva Almada translated by Annie McDermott and this one is also translated from Spanish and this one sounds a bit weird it's about three guys who go on a fishing trip they go to a spot where some significant accident or trauma happened and I think they're just talking about their lives and trauma and then maybe there's like dangerous things in the water um I don't know can a, can another tragedy be avoided it says so yeah it sounds a bit weird but okay then we have undiscovered by gabriella weiner translated by julia sanchez also translated from the spanish and this is um by a peruvian author and it says it's an autobiographical novel and i'm not quite sure how you can have an autobiographical novel it's either an autobiography or it's a novel um but it's about her life um sort of uncovering her past the history of colonialism and sort of looking at how the different parts of her past peruvian and the colonizer parts sort of intersect yeah sounds okay sounds okay none of these books are really really exciting me yet <laughs> apart from the dog one so next up we have White Knights by Ursula Honeck, translated by Katie Webster. And this one's translated from Polish. Okay, and I'm not sure this one really sounds like a me book either. It's 13 interconnected stories set in um, a mountainous region in Poland. And each story follows a different person from like, a village in the mountains and their experience, their ability to cope through poverty, um, disappointment, despair, tragedy, brutality. Uh, so, I, I mean, maybe, but short stories just generally don't work for me. It sounds okay, but it will probably be quite far down my list. Then we've got What I'd Rather Not Think About uh, by Genti Postuma, translated by Sarah Timmer Harvey. And this one's translated from the Dutch. And this one actually sounds like a much more me book. This is an exploration of grief um, told from a narrator who is a twin and their twin took their own life. Uh, and it's told in vignettes, uh, which we love. Rudy. So yes, that one sounds very much like a me book. And then there's The House on Via Gamito um, by Domenic Domenico Darnone, translated by Una Stransky. Stransky. Rudy, get your schnozzle out of my drawer. And this one is translated from the Italian. And I'll be honest, it's set in Naples in the 1960s, but the blurb doesn't really tell me much. I feel like it might be one of those books where not a lot happens. I mean, <laughs> when you've got nothing to say in the strap line except a masterpiece of contemporary Italian literature, it suggests that it's a book about nothing to me. So we'll see, that might be unfair. I'll wait for some other reviews on that before I go to it. Uh, then we've got Lost on Me by Veronica Ramo, translated by Leah Genetsko. And this one's also translated from the Italian. And this one follows a young girl in Rome who sort of is looking to escape, I believe, like the confines of her family dynamic and she sort of gets into the situation where he she escapes that and she uses storytelling and lies to get on in the world again the blurb isn't really shouting at me it, it could be good but we'll see and then we've got a dictator called dictator calls by ismail kadare uh, translated by Jen John Hodgson. I quite like the play on the uh, play title and Inspector Calls. <laughs> Why not? Uh, this is translated from Albanian. Uh, so nice to see a bit of a different language on the list. It's been very, very Spanish and Italian heavy, I feel, so far. Okay, and this 
looks at a three minute telephone call between Stalin and um, a famous poet, Boris Pasternak, and what that conversation entailed and the ramifications of afterwards. That sounds fine, but it says it's a combination of dreams and dossier facts, which not sure that's going to be my jam, if I'm honest. Um, I like the idea of like a, a political novel around Stalin, but if it's like fever dreamy, then that's not a Gemma book either. Then we've got K Ross by Jenny Erpenbeck, translated by Michael Hoffman. This seems to be one of the better known ones on the list, though it wasn't um, immediately obvious to me. Translated from the German. Okay, and this is set in the 1980s in Berlin, where a girl meets a guy on a bus. They sort of instantly connect, but after a while, she spends a night away from him, and then maybe he turns a bit nasty. Is very much paraphrasing the blurb could be good could be good that one's a, a definite maybe and then the final one on the list is the details by Aya Gembo translated by Kira Josephson from the Swedish and I don't think this one's going to be for me either um about a broadcaster who writes a forgotten love letter a friend abruptly disappears, a lover leaves something unexpected behind. I don't know, it just, it's an exploration of what it is to be human. But again, I'm reading the blurb and I'm just like, yeah, blah, 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 but what is it about? Um, and it doesn't really say, one of those conceptual things, uh, which isn't my jam. So I would say, all in all, I'm pretty disappointed with this long list not really pulled into any of these it's definitely going to be a long list that i wait and see what other people think obviously i will read and review um crooked plow i would like to read mater 210 and simpatia and what i'd rather not think about but past that none of the rest of these are really jumping out at me uh so yeah that's a little disappointing but also quite a relief because I feel like the Stella Prize and the Carol Shields Prize long lists that both came out last week were like exceptional and I want to read pretty much everything on both of those lists. So it's quite good to have a long list that I'm less excited for. Uh, but yes, I'd love to know what you guys are thinking of this list, which ones you are sort of called to, which ones have been on your radar. And if there's any of these that I've sort of gone Meh, that you think, oh, actually, no, that's a really good book. I would really love to know. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, if you are a prizey person, I follow pretty much all of the prizes to a greater or lesser degree. Um, so hit the subscribe button and stick around for all the season's prize content. I have reviewed my first of the Women's Prize for Nonfiction long list, uh, Some People Need Killing. So I'll leave that video here for you if you missed it. And I'll see you all very soon with another one. Bye, guys.